Gather, round, fellow thrill-seekers, for a tale that will send shivers down your spine. It was a chilly autumn evening in Akron, Ohio, a city steeped in industrial history. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows over the abandoned remnants of a once-thriving factory nestled in the heart of the city. Known as the Akron Steelworks, this decaying structure loomed like a silent sentinel of the past, its rusted facade bearing witness to years of prosperity and eventual demise. Legends whispered through the city spoke of a sudden closure, leaving the factory frozen in time, a graveyard of clanging machines and forgotten dreams. As an urban explorer with a penchant for unraveling the mysteries of forgotten places, I found myself drawn to the Akron Steelworks. Armed with a camera, flashlight, and a heart hungry for adventure, I embarked on a journey to document the remnants of Akron's industrial past. The factory sprawled across the landscape, its skeletal frame towering over the surrounding urban decay. Faded graffiti adorned its walls, telling stories of rebellious youth who had dared to breach its ominous exterior. I approached the entrance, the creaking of the rusted gates echoing like distant whispers of warning. The air inside carried a stale scent, a mix of dampness and decades-old machinery. My footsteps echoed through the cavernous halls as I navigated the labyrinth of forgotten industry. The remnants of conveyor belts and abandoned workstations lay frozen in time, coated in a thick layer of dust. The eerie silence was occasionally interrupted by unexplained creaks and groans, as if the very structure itself held secrets that stirred in response to my intrusion. I dismissed these sounds as the echoes of a bygone era, a symphony of decay playing out in the industrial graveyard. As I delved deeper into the heart of the factory, my flashlight's beam danced over forgotten artifacts of the past. Discarded blueprints, rusted tools, and yellowed safety posters adorned the walls. Each artifact whispered tales of the workers who once toiled here, their sweat and labor now swallowed by the relentless march of time. It was when I reached the upper levels that the atmosphere shifted. Locals had spoken of eerie lights flickering in the upper windows, and as I ascended the creaking stairs, I felt an unsettling presence hanging in the air. The windows, cracked and stained, revealed the moon casting an ethereal glow over the factory floor. I moved cautiously through the darkness, the only source of light emanating from my flashlight. The shadows played tricks on my perception, and at times, it felt as though the darkness itself watched my every move. I brushed off the unease, attributing it to the natural discomfort one might feel in the bowels of an abandoned structure. As I reached the uppermost floor, a chill ran down my spine. A distant sound, almost like muffled whispers, echoed through the desolate space. My breath caught in my throat as I strained to decipher the source of the unsettling noise. It seemed to emanate from a room tucked away in the far corner, hidden in the shadows. With cautious steps, I approached the room, the floor creaking beneath my weight. The whispers grew more distinct, evolving into murmurs that seemed to carry the weight of sorrow and despair. My flashlight's beam revealed a door ajar, inviting me to uncover the secrets concealed within. The room, once an office, held remnants of a forgotten tragedy. Faded photographs adorned the walls, images of workers with weary smiles, their eyes haunted by the weight of an unseen burden. A desk, covered in dust, bore a scattering of weathered papers. Among them, a letter addressed to the families of the workers. The letter spoke of a catastrophic accident that had occurred within the factory's walls. It detailed the loss of lives, the grief that enveloped the community, and the subsequent decision to shut down the Akron Steelworks. The factory's abrupt closure had not only left behind physical remnants but also a lingering sense of sorrow that clung to the very air. As I read the letter, a sudden draft extinguished my flashlight. The room plunged into darkness, and the whispers intensified. It was as if the spirits of the past, trapped in the confines of the factory, sought to communicate their anguish through the echoes of time. I fumbled to relight my flashlight, the metallic clicks echoing like gunshots in the stillness. When the beam pierced the darkness once more, I was met with a spectral apparition, not a ghostly figure, but a projection of the past. Shadows danced on the walls, reenacting the final moments before the factory's closure. Workers moved in a macabre dance, 
their silhouettes mimicking the motions of labor long gone. The whispers transformed into echoes of laughter, sorrowful moans, and the distant hum of machinery. The room became a theater of memories, a spectral playback of the factory's final hours. A sense of empathy overcame me as I watched the ethereal performance. The tragedy that had befallen the Akron Steelworks was not a malevolent force but a poignant reminder of lives lost and dreams shattered. The factory had become a vessel for the collective grief of a community left to grapple with the aftermath of an industrial catastrophe. As the spectral display faded, the room returned to its silent, dilapidated state. The air felt lighter, as if the ghosts of the past had found a momentary release through the echoes of their own history. I retraced my steps, descending the stairs with newfound reverence for the factory and the lives it once housed. The once ominous noises that echoed through the halls now seemed like the sighs of a bygone era, a requiem for an industry laid to rest. The eerie lights in the upper windows were no longer a source of fear but a testament to the residual energy that lingered within the Akron steelworks. As I stepped out into the cool night, the factory loomed behind me like a silent guardian of Akron's history. The legends of strange noises and eerie lights were not the result of malevolent forces but the echoes of a tragedy etched into the very walls of the decaying structure. And so, with a heavy heart and a story to tell, I left the Akron steelworks behind. The industrial graveyard held the weight of a forgotten past, and as I looked back one last time, I couldn't help but wonder if the spirits of the factory's workers found solace in the acknowledgement of their enduring presence within the haunted halls of Akron's industrial legacy. Settle in, my friends, for a tale that will make you question the shadows in the trees and the whispers in the wind. It all began in the heart of the Shawnee State Forest, a vast expanse of wilderness that held secrets as ancient as the trees themselves. I, an investigative journalist with a penchant for unraveling the unknown, caught wind of a story that sent shivers down my spine. A hiker had vanished without a trace, swallowed by the dense foliage that seemingly devoured all who dared to tread too deep. The official explanation was simple, they got lost. But, as I delved into the hidden folds of this mystery, I discovered a truth far more sinister. The locals spoke in hushed tones, exchanging tales of a malevolent force that lurked in the shadows of the Shawnee State Forest. It wasn't just a place, it was a living, breathing entity with a darkness that clung to the towering trees and whispered through the rustling leaves. Determined to uncover the truth, I ventured into the heart of the forest, armed with a notepad, camera, and a gut feeling that this story would change me in ways I couldn't fathom. The journey into the Shawnee State Forest was like stepping into another realm. The air grew dense with the scent of moss and earth, and the sunlight filtered through the thick canopy above, creating a play of shadows on the forest floor. My boots crunched on the fallen leaves as I followed the winding trail, feeling the weight of the ancient trees bearing witness to my intrusion. As I delved deeper, the ambience shifted. The symphony of chirping birds and rustling leaves gave way to an oppressive silence, broken only by the occasional creaking of the trees and the distant hum of unseen insects. It was as if the forest itself held its breath, wary of an outsider delving into its secrets. The first sign that something was amiss manifested in the form of strange symbols etched onto the bark of the trees. Runes and patterns that seemed older than time itself adorned the trunks, their meaning lost to the ages. My investigative instincts kicked into overdrive as I documented each symbol, the etchings creating a breadcrumb trail into the heart of the mystery. The forest seemed to respond to my presence. The rustling of leaves took on an otherworldly quality, like a soft murmur of discontent that followed me as I navigated the labyrinth and trail's shadows danced on the periphery of my vision, elusive figures that melted into the foliage whenever I tried to focus on them. One evening, as the setting sun cast long shadows through the trees, I encountered the first tangible evidence of the malevolent force said to haunt the Shawnee State Forest. A figure, obscured by the failing light, stood on the trail ahead. It was human-like, yet its features remained in perpetual shadow. As I approached, my heart pounded in my chest, and a feeling of dread washed over me. Turn back, a voice, both guttural and ethereal, echoed through the silent forest. 
The figure remained motionless, its form a silhouette against the dying light. Fear rooted me to the spot, and for a moment, the world seemed to hold its breath. I did what any investigative journalist worth their salt would do, I raised my camera, snapping photos in the hope of capturing proof of the enigmatic figure. But the images revealed nothing. The figure, a phantom in the lens, remained as elusive as the shadows that cradled it. Undeterred, I pressed on, fueled by a determination to uncover the truth. The symbols on the trees became more intricate, forming a pattern that seemed to lead towards the heart of the forest. Each step felt like a descent into an ancient power that pulsed beneath the earth. The nights in the Shawnee State Forest took on a life of their own. The moon cast an eerie glow through the branches, and the silence became a tangible force that pressed against my eardrums. I set up camp beneath the ancient trees, my tent a fragile barrier against the unseen presences that seemed to gather in the darkness. On one such night, as I huddled in my tent with the soft glow of a flashlight illuminating my notepad, I felt a presence just beyond the fabric. Shadows danced on the walls, taking forms that twisted and contorted into grotesque shapes. The air grew thick with an unnatural chill, and I could almost hear the whispers, a symphony of voices that spoke in a language both alien and primordial. Leave this place, they hissed, a collective plea that seemed to echo through the very fabric of the forest. But leaving was not an option. The forest had become a puzzle, and I was determined to unlock its secrets. As I pressed on, I stumbled upon a clearing bathed in moonlight. In the center stood an ancient tree, its gnarled branches reaching towards the heavens like the fingers of a spectral giant. At its base lay a mound of rocks, arranged in a circular pattern. It was here, in the heart of the forest, that I sensed the culmination of the malevolent force that gripped the Shawnee state. In that moonlit clearing, I uncovered the connection to an ancient Native American legend, the tale of a malevolent spirit, a guardian of the forest, known as the Shadow Watcher. According to the legend, the Shadow Watcher protected the heart of the forest, a sacred space where the spirits of the land converged. The malevolent force, it seemed, was not a vengeful entity but a guardian of an ancient realm. The symbols on the trees, the elusive figures, and the whispers in the night were the expressions of a power older than time itself. The forest was a tapestry of spiritual energies, and I had unknowingly stepped into the sacred dance of the Shadow Watcher. In that moonlit clearing, as the ancient tree loomed overhead, I felt a presence, a weight in the air that carried the essence of the forest itself. The symbols on the trees converged into a pattern, and the shadows that danced on the periphery coalesced into a singular figure, the Shadow Watcher. It stood before me, a silhouette against the moonlit backdrop, its form a manifestation of the ancient power that pulsed through the heart of the Shawnee State Forest. The air crackled with energy, and I, an intruder in the sacred dance, could only watch in awe as the guardian of the forest surveyed my presence. Respect this land, the voice, a chorus of whispers, echoed through the clearing. The Shadow Watcher, a sentinel of the ancient realm, spoke not with hostility but with a warning. The symbols etched onto the trees, the elusive figures, and the unsettling encounters were the manifestations of a force that sought to protect the delicate balance of the forest. In that moment, I realized the true nature of the malevolent force that had eluded my understanding. It was not a malevolence born of hatred but a guardian's watchful gaze, an entity forged by centuries of spiritual energies converging in the heart of the Shawnee state. As the first light of dawn painted the clearing with hues of pink and gold, the Shadow Watcher dissipated into the shadows, leaving behind a forest that pulsed with an ancient energy. The symbols on the trees, once cryptic and foreboding, now seemed like whispers of a forgotten language, a dialogue between the mortal realm and the sacred dance of the forest spirits. I emerged from the Shawnee State Forest changed, a witness to the ethereal dance that unfolded in the heart of the ancient trees. The malevolent force, once a source of fear, had revealed itself as a guardian of a realm that transcended the boundaries of the seen and unseen. And so, as I left the Shawnee state behind, I carried with me not just a story but a profound understanding. The forest, with its symbols, shadows, and whispers, was a living entity, a sanctuary guarded by the enigmatic presence of the Shadow Watcher. 
The ancient dance continued, unseen by most, yet forever imprinted on the very fabric of the Shawnee State Forest, a place where the mystical and the mundane coexisted in a delicate balance that defied the limits of comprehension. It all began with a group of friends, blissfully unaware of the horrors awaiting them within the decaying walls of an abandoned insane asylum. The asylum, a brooding monument to a dark chapter in mental health history, loomed on the outskirts of Athens like a forgotten nightmare. My group of friends, fearless in the face of the unknown, decided to spend a night exploring the eerie corridors and shadowy halls that had long been left to decay. The night was still and quiet as we approached the imposing structure. Moonlight cast ghostly shadows on the cracked pavement leading to the asylum's entrance. I, armed with a camera and a sense of morbid curiosity, couldn't shake the feeling that the air itself held the whispers of tormented souls. The asylum, a sprawling behemoth of faded bricks and broken windows, seemed to watch us with an indifferent malevolence as we crossed the threshold. The creaking door, pushed open by an invisible hand, welcomed us into a world frozen in time. The air inside was thick with the scent of decay, a musty perfume that clung to the peeling wallpaper. We navigated the labyrinthine corridors, the beams of our flashlights dancing on the peeling paint and cracked tiles. Each step echoed through the empty halls, a haunting reminder of the countless footsteps that had once filled these spaces with a cacophony of madness. The atmosphere intensified as we ventured deeper, and I couldn't help but feel the weight of unseen eyes upon us. The first sign that the asylum held secrets beyond the decayed walls manifested in the form of ghostly whispers. Indistinct voices seemed to reverberate through the empty halls, their words lost to the passage of time. We exchanged uneasy glances, our bravado masking the subtle tremors of fear that danced beneath our skin. As we entered what was once the common area, a chilling cold settled in the air. The temperature plummeted, and our breaths formed frosty clouds in front of our faces. I rubbed my arms, trying to shake off the unnatural chill, but the cold seemed to seep into my very bones. The flickering lights above cast long shadows that seemed to writhe on the walls like sentient entities. Unsettling silhouettes danced in the periphery of our vision, disappearing whenever we turned to confront them. The asylum, it seemed, held not just memories of the past but a spectral energy that clung to the air like a phantom mist. As we delved deeper into the forgotten halls, our flashlights revealed patient rooms frozen in time. Beds with restraints, peeling wallpaper adorned with fading drawings, and discarded medical equipment painted a grim picture of the suffering that once unfolded within these walls. The asylum, a canvas of despair, whispered its secrets to those willing to listen. In one particularly desolate corridor, the air thickened with an oppressive weight. Shadows seemed to coalesce into tangible forms, their movements synchronized with our own. I caught glimpses of figures in ragged hospital gowns, their faces obscured by darkness. Panic clawed at the edges of my composure as I wondered if the asylum's tormented history had woven itself into the very fabric of the building. The crescendo of the paranormal symphony reached its peak as we entered the asylum's former electroshock therapy room. The once sterile chamber, now a dilapidated arena of decay, seemed to pulse with residual energy. I shuddered as the memories of pain and suffering lingered in the air like an invisible fog. It was in this room that the whispers transformed into anguished cries. The air vibrated with the echoes of tortured souls, and a suffocating sorrow settled over us like a heavy cloak. My friends, their faces etched with a mixture of fear and disbelief, exchanged glances that betrayed the cracks in our facade of bravery. In the midst of the paranormal onslaught, a particular shadow detached itself from the darkness. It took the form of a hunched figure, its movements slow and deliberate. I watched, paralyzed, as it approached, its eyes, or the absence thereof, fixed on us with a malevolence that transcended the boundaries of the living. The figure, a manifestation of the asylum's tortured past, reached out towards us. I felt a bone-chilling cold wrap around my wrist as if an unseen hand sought to drag me into the depths of despair. Panic surged, and I yanked my hand away, stumbling backward as the figure dissipated into the shadows. 
With trembling breaths, we retreated from the electroshock therapy room, our nerves frayed and our resolve tested. The asylum, a vessel of torment and suffering, had revealed its disturbing secret, vengeful spirits, echoes of the past, bound to the decaying walls like prisoners of their own tragic histories. As we made our way towards the exit, the air seemed to lighten, as if the asylum itself exhaled a sigh of relief. The paranormal symphony faded, leaving behind a hollow silence that reverberated through the empty halls. The shadows, once animated with spectral life, returned to their dormant state. As we stepped into the moonlit night, the asylum loomed behind us like a fading nightmare. The experience, though terrifying, left an indelible mark on our psyches. The whispers, the cold spots, and the unsettling shadows had painted a portrait of a place where the veil between the living and the dead was thin, a place where the past bled into the present with haunting clarity. The asylum, with its tortured history and vengeful spirits, became a cautionary tale, a reminder that some places, scarred by the weight of suffering, retain a spectral energy that transcends the passage of time. And so, as we left the quiet town of Athens behind, we carried with us not just the memories of a chilling night but a deeper understanding of the thin line that separates the living from the echoes of the past.